I'm Andy Pilgrim, and today at NCM Motorsports Park, I have the mighty Mercedes AMG GTR, and I'm gonna be taking it on track. So the heart of the GTR really is in the engine. These engines are handcrafted AMG V8 four liter motors. They are bi-turbo. 577 horsepower, 516 pounds-feet of torque. It's a real monster engine, and that pounds-feet of torque, 1,900 RPM is maximum torque. I mean, these things dig out of a corner like you can't believe. You might think from looking at the engine cover here, the nice carbon cover, that that's actually where the engine is located, but no, the engine is way further back towards the firewall, and that's for weight distribution. GTRs are a very high-performance vehicle, and weight distribution is critical. They ended up having a 47% weight at the front and a 53% at the rear. And this really is, is critical to how well this car handles. And one other point before we get out from the engine is this particular handcrafted engine was built by Sunel Mimed Bogovic. Now, the reason I bring that up is because my cameraman said, I can't say that live on camera. So there you go. Sunel, great job, man. Thank you. Personally, I just love the front of the GTR. It's probably one of the most intimidating things you'll ever see in your rear view mirror. And I've seen a few of them when I've been running in GT3 races. This massive three-pointed star is obviously incredibly prominent. The designers put aero uh, considerations into this. So you can see it's kind of a tapered design going back. Also under here, you've got some active air louvers that help with cooling and aerodynamics. The front of this car is just magnificent. Before I talk about the brakes, I have to say something about the hood impressive hugely long hood i mean personally i've always wanted a car that you could land an airplane on the hood this is the car so along with that magnificent hood let's look at these brakes they're really monsters 15.8 inch carbon ceramic rotors on the front with the six piston calipers you need stoppers like this because the car is close to 200 mile an hour car yeah absolutely need it in the rears you've got 14.2 inch rotors again carbon ceramics in the back and it's got the brakes it needs this particular GTR does come with a carbon fiber package. This car is just under 3,600 pounds, so anything that they can do to save weight is good. Carbon roof, carbon rear wing, carbon side mirrors here. Weight savings is always an advantage in any sports car. There's a trick of the eye with the GTR because it looks like a really long car because of the optics with the hood. It's got this really long hood, but actually the wheelbase is only 104 inches. You can take a Corvette, for instance, it's about just around 107 inches for a Corvette. This actually has a shorter wheelbase. And if you look here, the driver positioning, the driver's head would be right here, which is about you know, 15 inches maybe from the start of the rear wheel. And it seems like 27 feet to the front, but actually, you know, it's really close to the rear wheel. There aren't many cars where a driver's head sits this close to the rear wheels in relativity. And again, weight distribution, that's what it's about. Get the weight towards the rear, get those rear tires to hook up and uh, they've just done a brilliant job with the design on this car. Nice touch with the AMG right there, I like that. This is very much a classic Mercedes interior. The AMG seats are superbly comfortable on a long trip, very comfortable and hold you in well on the racetrack. The infotainment system controls will be very familiar to anyone who's been in a Mercedes. Some of the stuff that is unique to the AMG GTR, you've got the individual, they've got the comfort, sport, sport, plus some race settings here. Uh, engine start button is pretty obvious. Once the traction control is switched off, you can then use this button for individual traction control, which I do, and I turn it almost all the way off, but I leave a little bit on there, and honestly, I didn't feel any intrusion from the traction control. It's a superb setup. And then the steering wheel, I like the flat bottom here. The analog looking controls are very basic. I like that. Some people might say it's old fashioned now, but I, I love the way it looks. It's very simple, very easy to read. If you want to shift yourself, which I don't, you can basically use the paddles. I let it shift itself on track. Uh, these, these transmissions are so good these days, but it's a really nice place to spend some time. It's a beautiful car. One of the things you may not think about with the GTR is somewhat practical. It is a two-seater sports car for sure, but one of the things people love most about the C7 Corvette, C6, or C5s going back, all of them, is the fact that they were practical in the sense you could get a lot of stuff in the back. So you've got two seats and you can grab some of your stuff while you're going along. It's a practical car in that sense. 
the GTR falls into that category. It actually has a lot of, tr lot of storage back here, a couple of sets of golf clubs, weekend bags, something like that. And I think just something worth mentioning, this is a real GT car. You can go away for the weekend and that's, that's pretty cool. All right guys, enough of the talk. Let's take this GTR on track. Great to hear this GTR booming down the front straightaway, almost 147 miles an hour coming into one. A little bit of curb there. Kind of like to use that curb if I can get away with it. Oh, oh, we almost got the chicken hawk there. Flying past the windshield, brilliant. You can see a little bit of rain coming down. I think we can thank the Dark Skies weather app for this one because they said rain coming down in about four minutes and they weren't kidding. Um, it, didn't, it didn't affect the lap at all. Uh, this much water doesn't make a difference, so you just have to kind of ignore it and just look for a lot of water coming down. Turn five, nice job through here. Michelin Cup 2 sticking really well. We've got 275, 35, 19s on the front, 325, 30, 20s on the rear. Doing a nice job of sticking this car around here. A little bit more rain, didn't make me too nervous at all. This is the kind of rain in a race, you start the first lap of the race, you're just praying that it doesn't get any worse because you're on slicks, it's kind of interesting. Bit of a mental game to just keep plowing through. We'd been fighting the rain here for the last several days. A tiny bit of standing water there between 12 and 13. Again, didn't affect anything. Almost 140 down through, and 137 through 15. That is a, it's flying through there. Feels really good. This is a tricky corner. 17's a tricky corner. You can see a tiny bit of oversteer there. It's a slippery corner. Good one, really enjoy that corner. Keeping it tight, tight, tight around here. These cars are so fun to drive and I just love the noise. Just, just great sounding engine in these cars. Gotta get a good run onto the front straightaway. Nice. Almost a 10, 11.01, great time. Right alongside the Porsche Turbo S and the Porsche GT3. We did manage to just beat the rain and I did get a hot lapping in the car and as I suspected, it did an amazing time. And I think that's what's incredible about this car. You look at it and you see just beautiful style. You get inside it and it's got all the executive luxury you'd expect from a Mercedes and I think that, that's the essence of this car right there. It's got the performance and it's got the luxury and it's got even a practicality as a street car. Well done, all the folks at AMG in a Falterback. You built a heck of a car.